morning, everyone. Welcome to church. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you for this morning, God. We thank you for who you are to us, Lord. We thank you for keeping us safe throughout last night, Lord Jesus. Thank you for taking us here safely, Lord. I pray, Jesus, that as we are here, Lord God, indeed, that there will be nothing that will distract us from giving you all the praise and the worship and the glory and the honor that you are deserving of, Lord Jesus. I pray, God, that as we come before you this morning, Lord, that you will accept our offering of praise, Lord Jesus, that our worship will come up to you as a sweet-smelling savor. Lord Jesus, I pray, God, that we'll be open to whatever it is that you want to do in us this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Can't imagine, can't imagine a life without your presence, a day without your glory, or a moment without your love. Shower me with grace. I live to seek your face, and I'll never go one day without you. Lord, I need you. I live to praise your name. If it means jumping. If it means dancing, if it means running, if it means clapping, I'll do anything to prove my love. I'll do anything to prove my love. If it means jumping, if it means dancing, if it means running, if it means clapping, I'll do anything to prove my love. I'll do anything to prove my love. I can't imagine, I can't imagine a life without your presence. A day without your glory Or a moment without your love Shower me with grace I live to seek your face And I'll never go one day without you Lord, I need you I live to praise your name If it means jumping If it means dancing If it means running If it means clapping I'll do anything to prove my love I'll do anything to prove my love If it means jumping If it means dancing If it means running If it means clapping I'll do anything to prove my love 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 Whatever you want, I'll do Whatever you need, I'll do anything to prove my love I'll do anything to prove my love Whatever you want I'll do whatever you need. I'll do anything to prove my love. I'll do anything to prove my love. Whatever you want, I'll do whatever you need. I'll do anything to prove my love. I'll do anything to prove my love. Whatever you want, whatever you want, I'll do whatever you need. I'll do anything to prove my love. 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 I'll do anything. Hallelujah. 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 And this morning, Jesus, even as we declare, God, that we'll do anything to prove our love for you. God, this morning we are chasing after you, Jesus, because we know that we need you more and more. I'm chasing after you, no matter what I have to do. I need 
your love is so amazing it brings me to my knees oh gonna love you forever Your love is so amazing, it brings me to my knees. Oh, gonna love you forever. Oh, gonna love you forever.
And my heart is your temple, living inside. See, Lord, you are the earth, breathe. Keep me alive. And Lord, I need you close, please stay around. Hallelujah. morning Jesus we thank you God that you're our way maker our miracle worker Lord Jesus you're a promise keeper God and your promises are yes and amen Lord Jesus this morning God we can continue to have faith in you Jesus because you never change and who you were you always will be and that's who you are to us now and you are here with us Jesus and so we lift up our worship to you God we lift up the praises to you, God. We give you all the honor and all the glory, Jesus, because there's none like you. There's none above you. There's none beside you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You are here, moving in this place. I worship you. I worship you. You are here. you you are here working in this place I worship you I worship you you are way maker miracle worker promise keep light in the darkness my God that is who you are Way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are here, touching every heart. I worship you, I worship you. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. 
when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. We make miracle work, promise keep. In the darkness, my God, that is who you are. We make miracle work, promise keep light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. We make miracle work, promise keep light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Even when I work, even when I don't hide in the darkness, you never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, never stop working. We make a miracle work. Promise, keep light in the darkness. My God. That is who you are. They make a way, make a miracle work. Promise keep light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Hallelujah. But it won't prosper When the darkness falls It won't prevail Cause the God I serve Knows only how to triumph My God will never fail Oh my God will never fail I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. There's power in the mighty name of Jesus. Every war he wages, he will win. No, I'm not backing down from any giant. Cause I know how this story is. Yes, I know how this story is. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the battle belongs to you, Lord. I'm gonna see a victory. I'm gonna see a victory. For the 
what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good you turn it for good you take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good you turn it for good you take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good you turn it for good you take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good you turn it for good you're turning it around you take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good you turn it for good you take what the enemy meant for evil and you turn it for good you turn it for good i'm gonna see your victory i'm gonna see your victory for the battle belongs to you lord i'm gonna see your victory i'm gonna see your victory for the battle belongs to you lord i'm gonna see your victory i'm gonna see your victory for the battle belongs to you lord
give me wisdom You know just what to do And I will love you, Lord, my strength And I will love you, Lord, my shield And I will love you, Lord, my rock Forever all my days, I will love you, God. God, I look to you, I won't be overwhelmed. Give me vision. See things like you do, and God, I look to you. You're where my help comes from. Give me wisdom, you know just what to do, and I will love you, Lord, my strength. And I will love you, Lord, my shield. King Saul being rejected as king and God saying that it re he, was, he was really sorry that he chose Saul to be king or allowed Saul to become king. When, when Saul was small he elevated him to the position of being king but Saul was not walking in obedience in those latter days. Saul had become a God unto himself basically he had started looking out for himself he was given a commandment he was given an instruction that he was to kill all that was there in the land but yet still of the Amalekites yet still he took the best of what was there and when the high priest Samuel came he heard bleating of sheep yet Saul declared that he had carried out the commandment and David had to say to him obedience is better than sacrifice why am I hearing the bleating of sheep in the second lesson a young man if you were to read first um, second Samuel 14 you'd say it was so handsome he was so beautiful 
that even his hair grew so well that he would cut it once per year. And when he cut it, every time it weighed over five pounds. That's how quickly his hair grew. And he was beautiful, the scripture said. It didn't say he was handsome, it said he was beautiful. Absalom was the son of the king, but Absalom had felt as if he was wronged by his father, King David. What had happened? Tamar, his, his sister, had been done in, had been raped, had been abused, had been sexually violated. And he didn't believe that David had given the justice to the situation that should have been given. And so he plotted and he even invited out the other brothers after two years he was silent and this is one of the reason i want persons to know turning the other cheek doesn't mean that i do not respond immediately it may be that i am planning something quite devious as i said in eastern religions they will grow their great grandchildren to avenge the death of their father if they believe they were wrong. So the cheek is not turned unless whatever wrong was done becomes buried and never ever becomes alive again. Cheek is not turned. When you hit someone and they turn the other cheek, it means that wrong which was done was buried and there's no life to it ever again. So Absalom, feeling that he was wronged, invited out all the other brothers and slew them. One escaped and was able to come back and tell King David what was happening. David exiled Absalom from the kingdom. But years after, he reinvited him. Absalom certainly still was not satisfied. Some of you watch television and watch some drama stories. I'd love to see the drama being put on screen of Absalom and what Absalom does and how he planned all that he did. When you read verse 1, it said, Absalom provided himself with chariots and horses. Remember this, Absalom was the prince. He was the fairest of all the princes. He now was the only prince apart from one other brother who is alive because he himself plotted their deaths. Absalom was seeking a way to the throne, the throne of David. But guess what he didn't do? He didn't seek to do it by violence. First of all, he became unaccountable to his father, the king. Everyone who came and, you know, it, it, I, I love to run the parallel to it. It's like eating messages. So you're a leader, you're part of a household and someone would come to Crystal and the message was supposed to be given to Crystal because Crystal is queen of her household. But someone else would intercept those messages. The word I'm using is deliberate intercept. Or someone would intercede. That's a go in between. That's what intercede means. And they would now be the one like Absalom who would be seeking to give justice to a situation. No man, the king no really need to hear about it. I will deal with it. No need to be accountable. And so the messages were eaten. And Absalom received all the praise because he seemed to have dealt justly with all that was happening. He even ensured that he didn't seem as harsh as King David with what was happening. So when they would bow, he would say, no, don't do that man. Get up and he would kiss their hand. He'd show them favor. In a Jamaica, would have say, my friend them up. He showed them favor, a smiling face. And, you know, sometimes the king would be harsh. But in no way was he now accountable to his father, the king. He was now running his own show. And sometimes I love to call it church in a church. Or another kingdom inside a kingdom functioning. That's exactly what he was doing. He was stealing the hearts of others. Yet not passing on the information or letting the king know what was happening. 
he took it on to himself by the way if you were to look in the book of Ezekiel and look at what Satan did in the heaven what Absalom is doing here is exactly what Satan did he was prince in the heavens and he allowed the glory to come to him and not pass it on and so himself and one third of all those who did that were thrown out of heaven we tend to refer to this sort of behavior as Absalomic spirit but if you're not spiritual just call it the Absalomic behavior David had to flee the throne the hearts of the nation was won over by Absalom. Not only was he beautiful, not only was he fear, he was just. He preyed upon all the weak points and he made all the suggestions he could wherever he could and carried it out even behind the back of the king. And so he won and stole the hearts of everyone because he seemed to have been doing what was right. But he was still out of place because he was unaccountable to lead a prince yet unaccountable throw back to Saul Saul on the other hand ruling out of arrogance Saul on the other hand ruling and not paying attention and this is where we will have even in church and households we were talking about dysfunctions a couple of weeks ago where what happens is that the identifying of weaknesses and loopholes is where these persons will just put themselves and then they will capture the hearts of those who are there Saul on the other hand thought that he was losing his position and so he thought he could by himself do some things instead of relying on God I want to give a warning to these two positions because I want to touch Joseph I want to touch as I said this morning of COVID and titbits I want to touch something that has really touched my heart and I've I will be speaking to it in the week of prayer but I want to talk a bit about it as well if we do not guard our hearts then even what we think we're doing as good I'm not sure what happened here with Absalom why he never thought he could have done it because even in the church there will be those who believe they can do a better job than the king or the leader or the leader of the household and have placed themselves in such a position not knowing they are destroying the kingdom anyhow if their assignment was not that by God whether leader or prince or whoever it is and the Absalomic spirit can only be done by leadership it can't be done by a regular person that if we don't recognize what is happening then guess what the enemy will find and make the place a playground for his exploits Joseph let me go to Genesis 39 I'm going to try to bring everything together this morning in a few minutes after giving you what Joseph did here in Genesis 39 and from verse 7 it says and it came to pass after these things that his master's wife cast longing eyes on Joseph Joseph did look good and she said lie with me but he refused and said to his master's wife look my master does not know look my master does not know what is with me in the house and he has committed all that he has to my hand there is no one greater in this house than I what a position Joseph declared nor has he kept back anything from me but you because you are his wife how then can I do this great wickedness and sin against God 
There are many people who are worried that church has been shut down and they can't congregate. We have a problem with that. What are the lessons we are learning from COVID? Remember when we had to be quarantined, we first spoke to the issue of build an altar to your house. You know, for some people, them just need to stop the church for a week, them backslide. There are some people that just need to go foreign for two days and then backslide. It begs a question. Is it you congregating or is it that the congregating at church is what determines whether you remain saved or not? You know, many thoughts flew through my mind as I thought about Joseph who at this point had not been with his family, had not been in church, had not been at the place of teaching for how many years? Almost 14 years. But he could declare at this point that guess what? God is still in me although I'm in a strange land and all that they are teaching is not the teaching that I received by my father that the teachings of my father remain with me although I'm not in a structured place with a building over my head I am not about to step out hey I can't sin and do this wicked thing and sin against my God I can't if you're position of remaining righteous is dependent on your congregating here there's a problem nothing is wrong with congregating the scripture said that we should seek to congregate more often because iron sharpness iron it is good but if outside of you not being able to congregate you are suffering it would have meant that the teachings that you have been receiving may not have found good soil and is bearing fruit anybody with me it means that there needs to be a shift it means there need to be something else that we're thinking about COVID must teach us that in the absence of congregating or if we were in a foreign land that doesn't even allow congregating that you still remain Christian you still remain focused you still have God on the inside you're able to declare him wherever you are and it is not dependent upon you being here I'm gonna say this and it gonna sound weird but you know some of the people them who always I talk about sir you're not open back church that's someone who don't ever come church. I can't soon I laugh under the mask. I don't know if we believe that we are marking a register on Sunday morning or God is in heaven marking a register and say, Crystal Morrison, present, sir. Tashane Hines, present, sir. <laughs> Jonathan Thomas. But there. So the attendance record in heaven is being looked at because, uh, you know, on the day when he opens the, the, the Lamb's Book of Life, I don't know if you're going to see attendance there and punctuality. But one thing you're going to see, and I jump back to Saul and I jump back to Absalom, is whether or not obedience was found written in that book. If it is not that you're walking in obedience, and some people tell life and God about them obedient, you see. If somebody come and tell you, Alice, I look a man, come and just look point and say, Hey girl, you know, so last night God tell me say you're my wife, and I'm just being obedient in telling you. Me I gotta ask about your obedience and whether or not I got to tell you, you know. Because if God I gotta tell you, if you tell me too. Hello? If it's something that God tell you for you, then, and it not involve nobody else but you and you need to walk it out, then be obedient. But don't try to tell the other person about what obedience is for them when God don't tell them, are you getting a message? <clears throat> and that was the problem Saul must have had because he was told and he knew it wasn't just that Samuel told him he was fully aware. 
it is not about church attendance although church attendance is important for you to recharge for you to hear and and i still believe it as i say you will hear more in in the week of praying and fasting that now more than any other time where you can get the word listen to it faith comes by what attending church what faith comes by faith comes by what oh man we have never been in an age more than now that we can hear we can attend our four church on a sunday and not even leave our house hello we have earphones and we can turn on the phone nobody again can ever use the excuse of saying i remember long ago when we just started the youth ministry them can't find gospel music every time them turn on the the, the social media platform all them here is secular no more than any other time you can't tell me say you can't find a church for you attend because you can attend online school is attendance online mr trump said if you're only attending online you can't come to country is that going to stop you from learning so why we treat church differently and things say come on we are a place that I want us to understand that if we're not learning the lessons, if we're not understanding what's happening, if we're le not learning that in church and in families we can diabolically scheme without even knowing it and plotting by being unaccountable and destroying the very fiber and foundation of family, it, whether in church or whether at home or even if as leaders we are so caught up with our arrogance that we do our own thing or are we going to be like a joseph that regardless of what happened and where we are at we are so in tune with the word of god that we are able to stand regardless of the situation that we are faced that we can stand up and declare and i'm not preaching this as if i'm perfect and i've done it already you know the fact of the matter is we have to come to a place of repenting and understanding what god requires of us it was sad that when you complete the story of saul it took saul some convincing for him to repent and even when he repented that the, the the word came through samuel that god has rejected you and when he turned and he grabbed at samuel the brent the the, the garment was torn and he said just as how that was torn it's the same way that God has torn the kingdom from you people of God let me see if I can end it this way wherever you are whatever you do obedience is the key come say to somebody obedience 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 to God and obedience must be genuine and it must be sincere obedience isn't a feeling obedience is a decision anybody with me let me say it again obedience isn't a feeling it's a decision because so often when it is time to become obedient the feeling that you get you might walk in disobedience obedience is a decision obedience is actually hearing and carrying out the instruction of whoever had given it to you when you walk in obedience and the key to success is always obedience Saul found that out sadly why did Absalom fail even after he got David to flee his throne if you continue to read the story you'll see that David retakes the throne because God had said something through David many years ago that some people miss even in church today David got the opportunity to kill Saul in a cave and David had to make a declaration that even if you see a king going astray it is not in your position to usurp his authority David said touch not the Lord's anointed even all when they are the wrong you're going to heap destruction on your own head the throne of David 
is the throne of our Lord and Savior and his lineage. It was given to David to sit in that position, not Absalom. So when you try to unseat someone or dislodge someone from what God has appointed and anointed, you're heaping destruction on yourself. You may find yourself sick. You may find yourself hospitalized. You may find all sorts of different things, successes in your life becomes temporary. While the other person who is still doing the wrong is still being successful and all God is asking them to do is repent. There may be some of us inside this house today who know that we have missed what obedience is because we thought it was about a lightning bolt flash and God just doing something you know like one youth one told me I remember his name we called him Frass we sat out there and we we're talking and him said boy him not real believes that God real the only way him that believes that God real is if God would have broke one arm on our foot right now where him there and there were about five of us sitting down outside Ron, I think you were there that day. And you just hear the chair them just start moving from him. Because we were afraid that God was about to broke somebody hand and foot. Because we know that you're not challenge God so. Because you challenge him so, he may just accept the challenge. You know, you watch Instagram and these things and you see everybody saying challenge accepted, black and white photo. God may just accept the challenge. And I guarantee you, you're not going to win. Do not challenge God like that. Do not allow any of these spirits or behaviors to become your portion. The only one of these three individuals is the position of Joseph. That regardless of where you are, regardless of who is in your circle, regardless of who is seeing you, regardless of what is happening round about you, that your motives are pure. That they are genuine before God. That when God weighs them in his scales and balance, you come out being tried, tested and proven. Because without that happening, it won't be about church attendance. Because the Lamb's book of life is not about church attendance. It's about obedience. And it's the only way you'll find your name written in the Lamb's book of life. Each one of us will have to give an account for ourselves. I can't say, boy, terrorists did do me that, so that's why I'm doing it. No. You still had a decision to make for your son. No, sir, it's because them kill my brother while I kill him. You still had a decision to make for yourself. And when tested and tried by the sovereignty of God, if it doesn't add up, if it doesn't seem to align with what God is saying, We are in trouble. People of God, just bow your heads for a minute. I want you to hear these words from Jeremiah chapter 3. Starting from verse 12. To verse 15. The word of the Lord came to Jeremiah and it says this. Go and proclaim these words towards the north and say return backsliding Israel says the Lord I will not cause my anger to fall on you for I am merciful says the Lord I will not remain angry forever only acknowledge your iniquity that you have transgressed against the Lord your God and have scattered your charms to alien deities under every green tree. I mean, I warn about the Christmas tree too, you know. And you have not 
obeyed my voice says the Lord return O backsliding children says the Lord for I am married to you I will take you one from a city and two from a family and I will bring you to Zion and I will give you shepherds according to my heart who will feed you with knowledge and understanding the message this morning was more about those of us who seem to be slipping away from God even in this season we have been asking the question God why this corona why all these things are happening why am I left without a job why did my family member die why are so many dying God I'm not understanding I'm not clear God I, I, I don't know where to turn God I'm not knowing what to do I see your word but father I, I don't even feel I'm trusting your word much anymore I'm not sure whether or not I should live your word much anymore father I am doubting your existence when I listen to some of what persons are saying God you're not real this message is primarily for those of us return or backsliding Israel that we come to a place of recognizing that regardless of what we see and how we feel and how we might perceive things that God is real and he's there just giving himself to us and nothing can separate us from his love exactly as he said here he says for I am married to you I take one I take two from our family Obedience is better than sacrifice. Partial obedience is still disobedience. Saul proved that. He did everything else, destroyed the Amalekites, but he took the best instead of destroying everything, even no matter how pretty and good it looked. What are those idolatrous things in our mind that we have not slain? But we have accepted because they are, we are comfortable with them and we want them. Come on, put that before God right now. What are some of those things that we arrogantly display and feel that it's about us or feel that this is what it is, but when we check it is not in keeping with God. Time to slay those. That we become like Joseph who will stand in the face of temptation who will stand in the place where he can get up and declare everything else in this house my master gave me except you I do not have the authority nor the permission nor have I been allowed to walk in that way and neither has my authority above him given me that and I cannot do this and sin against God. Return, O backsliding Israel. Return, my anger shall not remain forever. He says, the only thing I am asking you to do, says the word here in Jeremiah 3, is to admit, is to confess where we have gone wrong. hallelujah and so father this morning we bow our hearts before you father we speak to the things in our lives that needs to die father like the Amalekites we put them to death father no matter how good they feel no matter how beautiful they look father no matter what they are father we cut it off now in the name of Jesus Cut it off now in the name of Jesus. Father, some of the hustles we make that we know are contrary to your word. But because we want a dollar God. Oh Father, forgive us your people for the relationships that we continue to keep that are not of you father forgive us lord god 
for not bowing the knees and giving you worship father for not recognizing that it is not your will that any should perish but father that you are giving us time to correct our backslidden positions father that you have given us a chance to come to a place of giving you the honor and the glory help us oh god in jesus name amen may we stand please may i invite the levitical team I give myself away so you can use me. Give myself away. I give myself away so you can use me. Here I
So right where you are, where you're standing, as you have declared this song, I surrender all. It all belongs to you, my life, my soul, my life, everything is yours. Just lift your hands where you are and just declare before God and say, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I surrender everything to you. Father, forgive me. Father, I confess we have fallen short, we have sinned against you. And Father, even like David, we have sinned against you and you only have we sinned against. Father, we have not walked in obedience. Father, even today, we make that decision of walking in obedience to your word. Father, guide us by your spirit. Father, you love us. You are married to us. And so, Father, we thank you for this marriage. Lamb of God, we bless you. Cleanse us. Keep us. Keep us standing. Father, may our hearts and our motive be pure. May we not walk around in arrogance nor in deceit. But Father, may we walk, Lord God, standing tall, knowing that with you in our lives, there is nothing we must do to sin against you or do wickedness against you. So Father, bless your people and keep your people. Lift up the light of your countenance upon your people and be gracious unto your people. Father, make your face to shine upon them and give them your peace. In Jesus' name, amen. If you have never surrendered your life and you want to do so this morning, still feel free to come to the altar. Let us pray with you. Or even if you feel your need of prayer and you want to do that, we can still do that. And so, remember as you leave, right there, the basket, you may place your offering in it. We already blessed it. Have a great day. Live good. Live love. Live better. Thanks for being here. It all belongs to you. Oh.